In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a pillow, which will allow us to take a look at some of our basic tools like uh, our FFD deformer, um, as well as some of our uh, sculpting brushes and perhaps even soft selection. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a cube here. And the whole point of using kind of an FFD for this type of approach is um, we can start with very few segments. So I may do something like um, six segments on the X, and actually I want um, six on the Y as well, only one on the Z. And what I will do is make this cube much thinner on the Z. Actually, we do want two in there, that one extra. And so we're just getting kind of the basic shape of our pillow uh, set up. And now what we can do is go ahead and create our FFD deformer and make that a child of our cube, right? Deformers can work either as a child or a peer. And in this case, we want it to be a child. And we also want to hit fit to parent. Now it can be really difficult to see this FFD. So I'll make sure I'm in model mode, switch to my scale tool and just scale it up ever so slightly. Now what the FFD or free form deformation or deformer is going to do is allow us to go into point mode here, select a point and it will move our geometry based on proximity. So the closer points or polygons of our object are to a part of the FFD, the more it's gonna be influenced by it as we move and manipulate it. So that's what we're seeing here. As I move this down, you can see this point, you know, moves pretty much right with it. And there's a little bit of a curved fall off here, uh, which allows us to get kind of smooth shapes, curves much easier than if we were to try and do this where we have to move each point or polygon, maybe even edge individually. Okay, so it also allows us to keep, um, you know, kind of our polygon count low because we're gonna be able to get a nice smooth curved surface with this and then drop our pillow into a subdivision surface generator to get even more detail out of it or to smooth this out even more, I should say. Um, and then we can go and add more detail after the fact. So. That's kind of the, the whole process here. Uh, now, I will eventually add some more points um, to our FFD. Um, and while it's typically uh, better to add the number of grid points you need before you start manipulating this, I think we'll be okay here. But what I want to do is go into rectangle selection and just start kind of getting my overall pillow shape where the top is curved, maybe the bottom is curved. And if you had a couch that you were going to try and place this pillow on, it'd be a good idea to uh, position that. Um, now and the pillow now so you can kind of make it fit the couch and make it look like it's sitting on the couch so i'm just pulling all kind of the points there towards the middle to get the curve the uh, actual middle points i'm going to pull out to get this once again a little bit smoother and i may want this pillow even smaller or thinner i should say so i'm just going to a side view make those nice and thin maybe even scale this out a little bit to curve out the side there. And so now we have kind of your basic pillow. Uh, I will be going over how to make kind of piping, but that you want to do at the very end of kind of the pillow shaping process. So if this is all you need, great. Um, you can go ahead and start making piping and I'll, we'll see how to do that in a bit. But I want to take this shape a little bit further here. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is start to increase my grid points in my FFD. And like I said, we typically wanna do this before we start moving it, um, though it does seem to work a little bit better now. And so I'm gonna actually want five here. And what having more points will allow us to do is get more of a um, kind of a point uh, with our pillow here. So it, it doesn't, the corners aren't as rounded. Uh, so if that's what we want, we can just kind of come in here, make sure we have the points all the way around selected. And I'll scale these kind of out. You can see how that's giving me a little bit more of uh, a corner to this pillow. I'm going to do oops, the same thing here. And it gets a little bit trickier to make sure you're selecting the right points. And that's why going to an orthographic view and orbiting can definitely help. And I could scale those up as well. And you can see we can get pretty decent kind of hard corner there uh, on our pillow. And if we want to round it out just a bit more, Kind of balance it out we can do that so that's looking pretty good for our basic 
pillow shape. And so, you know, once again, uh, we can take this further. What I'm gonna do now though, is make sure, yep, both subdivisions are set the same because I'm gonna do um, current state to object. So I end up with a collapse down version of this because to create our piping, I want a spline. And what I'm gonna do is select the edge loop I want to use for this. So maybe something like that. Milk, oop, this one, yeah, that looks like it's in the middle. Actually, let's go to the side here and confirm that. Yep. Okay, and then what we do is go tools, I'm sorry, mesh, edge to spline. And what that's gonna do is take our edge selection and create a spline from it. So it's right there. Go ahead and delete that because that's really all I needed that collapse down version for. And now we have this spline that perfectly follows the contour of our pillow. And I can use this with a sweep, right? So sweep, drop that my spline in there, drop a circle in there, and then scale this down. So now we have our piping. And so that is the basic pillow. Okay, not too hard. My recommendation would be though, if you're, you are gonna add any more detail to save the, the piping for the very end. So I'm just gonna hide this since I actually get rid of it. Um, because if I wanna take this pillow further, I'm probably going to have to collapse this down. Um, and uh, lots of ways to do this, but I'll just do right click and make editable, or I could hit a C or that icon right there. And so now we have our pillow collapsed down. And while we've tried to put this off as long as possible, in order to get more detail like wrinkles or, or irregularities, we do need more polygons like we're, we're seeing. Now to kind of push this further, we could come in here and maybe select a corner and use soft selection. So soft selection will allow us, uh, similar to what we were seeing with the FFD, to select you know, a few points and then have a fall off um, effect nearby points. And you can visualize that fall off here with the color. You can change the shape of this fall off. I would probably go with something kind of rounded here, like a dome, bell, circle, all right? Or you can even use uh, your own. But this will allow us to maybe move something a little bit up or down. If I wanted to just kind of, like I said, add some irregularities, let's take down the radius a little bit so it's not quite as big. So maybe just something like this, just to make this a little bit more natural looking because no pillow is perfect. So just kind of adding some slight changes to the shape all over. And this would also be a good tool to help you um, maybe uh, conform to a couch a little bit better. So, you know, maybe you don't have the gap there. Uh, though, like I said, I probably would have started that process earlier in, in when we were at the FFD stage. But this is starting to look, you know, oops, maybe those last three, not so much, <laughs> but a little bit more natural, organic. Uh, another set of tools that can be very helpful for this um, is our under our mesh menu, and it's essentially our sculpting brushes. Uh, and while we're not going to be adding geometry here, uh, this can be helpful for, you know, adding wrinkles, um, things like that. So. You could come in here, maybe use the knife tool to kind of get a little bit of a wrinkle here. And while we definitely want to avoid those polygons, you know, kind of intersecting, we can then come back with our smooth, do a little bit there, or perhaps even use our grab tool to kind of help get little wrinkles and things like that. Now, I do need to be careful you know, uh, we can see the individual edges there. Worst case scenario, I can drop this in another subdivision surface to smooth this out even more. Okay, and so actually that looks pretty good. And come in here and kind of perhaps um, adjust some of these other spots as well, uh, if necessary. But that is kind of the basics of creating a pillow. Uh, hopefully you like this video. If there's anything else you want to see, please let me know.